Fully Charged Live, San Diego. We're here, it's Sunday. We're both quite tired, aren't quite we, Chris? Tired. Um, I'm joined by two old friends, Chris, CEO and founder of Aptera, and Aptera, one of the most remarkable and exciting new electric cars in the world right now. Now, we're not going to do a full episode on this newly unveiled Gamma prototype because, well, it's a scene of chaos behind me. <laughs> Chris and the Aptera have caused a bit of a stir at our humble show this weekend. This thing has been swarmed since Saturday morning when they first took the covers off it. So, we're not going to get too in detail. We're not going to give you the absolute basics about Terra. If you have no idea who these guys are, pause this, go check out our main channel episode on these guys. If you haven't seen that, for the love of God, go and watch it. What we're going to do today, Chris, is we're going to have a look around Gamma and we're going to take a look at some of the key changes because this is your latest and greatest prototype. It is. I drove Alpha, which was looked quite finished, but mm -hmm. wasn't that finished. We took a spin in Beta, which looked very unfinished, but was actually <laughs> a little bit more finished. Yeah. And now we have this, which is kind of a combination of both. The engineering is there and it's starting to look like the finished article. So tell me a little bit about Gamma. Yeah, uh, Gamma has changed from Beta that you drove in terms of the production content that's in the vehicle. So we're calling Gamma an 80% production content vehicle. It's our third stage in a four-step program to get us to production. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. Um, you've ridden in Alpha and Beta. This is Gamma. We've refined it since Beta, and we only have one more step till we get to production uh, and a production intent design by the end of the year. So How some of the big changes um, from Alpha and Beta since you've seen it is uh, the wheel pants, first of all. So it actually speeds up the air towards the back of the wheel pan, and it sucks the high pressure uh, towards the rear, which is what the whole vehicle does. The cambered body actually takes the high pressure zone that forms in front of the vehicle, and it speeds up the air under the belly and sucks it to the back of the vehicle. The problem with most modern vehicles today, an SUV or a sedan, is you've got a big blunt front end, and the high pressure zone that's created in front, it can't go anywhere. Mm. So we're off the ground more. Um, the aerodynamics of this have changed such that the nose is a lot pointier and a little lower. The whole vehicle is actually longer by four inches. So we can Ooh. talk about that when we're in the rear. And the suspension is much more refined. Obviously we want air to flow through the suspension as nicely as possible. So the the Alpha that you drove was, was kind of Kind of yucky in the suspension area. I mean, that's probably uh, one of the most beautiful very clean. suspension components I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it you is. You had one of these exposed for me when I paid you a visit, and you were very proud of this shape, which again has been fettled uh, through sort of. Hours it it, it, and lo hours it looks of... more like an aircraft, but it you know, really it really does. Uh, it, it's very, very tough. That's the main suspension member of the whole vehicle. It takes okay. all the shock loads and everything, so it's very strong. And then just design-wise, a few tweaks here. These, uh, this, this little strip of lighting looks new to me. Yeah, all the lighting is new, and obviously uh, beautiful. Um, ultrasonic sensors in the wheel pan so you can see where you are in relation to other vehicles and curbs when you're parking. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, this vehicle has finished an operational solar on the dash and the roof. You can option up the Uptera with an optional solar hood yep. and tailgate. Um, so that full solar package will get you 40 miles of free solar range, free from the sun every day. And this, if I'm right, is the first uh, prototype that you've actually integrated the solar panels on, is that correct? Yeah, it was only last week that we finally had full solar on a vehicle and charging su through our charge controller to our 400 volt battery pack. Wow. Total success. We have a super efficient charge controller. I'm so proud of our electrical engineering team and our solar team wow. to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. You test everything on a bench. We had a solar mule that's outside, but it's burning through resistors or charging a small battery pack. It's, you know, it's, you test all the pieces, but this is now all put together and it's all working. It's amazing, I love it. Phenomenal. And if we come down the side a little bit, Chris, I'm gonna get Andy to get some close-up shots of this. He's gonna to have to fight some people to achieve <laughs> that. But these are the most beautifully, seamlessly integrated solar panels I've ever seen. These are completely flush with the bodywork. You almost wouldn't spot that they were there. Yeah, aerodynamics is very important to us. So everything's conformal and super flush. We have our own proprietary solar stack. We make our own solar panels. Mm -hmm. um, these uh, uh, solar interconnects are proprietary. Uh, we've shown them off on this vehicle, uh, but in production, you won't see them as much. Look at this guy. Oh. That's, that's what, 6'8"? I could swing a cat in here, Chris. <laughs> that's properly roomy. So this interior looks nothing like the Alpha that I sat in, nothing which is like a proper the Alpha. part spin job. Yeah, much Tell much me, what bigger. am I looking at? We've got a yoke steering wheel. Yep. 
Do we have quite quick steering lock? We do, yes, yes. Okay, that's good because that annoyed me about the plaid is it yeah. was a yoke but you had to get crossed up in order to... Oh, uh, it's speed sensitive too. Oh, nice. So yeah. the, actually the, the speed of the steering mm -hmm. rack is... Yeah, so as you go faster, you know, it's uh, it's it's less torque on the wheel, that's so you stay in the lane. Yeah. That's, that's like yeah. supercar yeah. stuff. Okay, and what else and am the, I looking at? The here? side view um, image system is here, so you can always keep your vision through the windshield, yeah. but you can have a sight picture of what's going on on the side and behind your vehicle okay. right in front of the steering wheel. So the screen here is essentially my, 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 my wing mirrors, but just yep. right in my line right of sight. Right in your line of sight. And then what else? This is a really interesting material in the center console. Uh, that's, um, that's pineapple leather. <laughs> Uh, it's a very cool material. We don't know if it'll make it into production, but okay. we wanted to try it. It feels good. It's interesting, isn't the, it? Uh, the, the story behind the center console is that it's made with three different elements, and we're going to work with aftermarket suppliers to make those three different elements available to our consumers, yeah. and they can make them anything they want. They can be chargers, storage, they can uh, you know, be cup holders or yeah. whatever you want. The drive position is just, it's real sports car stuff, isn't it? My yeah. feet are kind of in parallel with my button. <laughs> the view out of this and thing. And the, uh, oh. the center screen now has the vent for the air conditioner around the screen. Okay. So you have side and top and bottom and you can direct that uh, side to side to the passenger, to the driver and it gets really good circulation around the interior, which makes our air conditioning unit more efficient. Which is, of course, very important, because it'd be a real shame to waste a lot of energy heating a cabin, having exactly. done all this clever work. Yeah. And then since coming around the back, any noteworthy changes? Obviously, we're a bit longer, so I'm guessing we've got a tiny bit more trunk space, which there was plenty of to begin with. Yes, yes, it's, um, it's four inches longer now. Uh, so you'll notice from the side profile, it's a good bit sleeker. Yeah. But the floor is actually lower, too, by 50 millimeters. Oh, okay. So if you push the seats forward, you have seven feet from the back of the seats to here. You can sleep two people with your head back here, your feet up there, dog in the middle, under the stars, yep. solar charging during the day, nothing but bliss. And then what else? What else do we need to talk about before we wrap this up? This uh, is uh, interesting, the I, charger I, behind Yes, the this plate, beautiful this charge port, this Tesla charge port, nice. which is just superior engineering, is, is uh, ready for use and ready for charging. And then as far as the company, what stage are we at now? We've got Gamma. When can we expect the next prototype? What are you guys, are you here taking pre-orders? Are you looking for investment? What's We're hoping situation? to have a production intent design done by the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, but. Some of that is gated by investments. So we're here asking people go to invest.aptera.us and support the company. And with pre-orders and investment, we hope to have uh, our production lines ready into next year and scale production in 2023. How many times do you think you've said all of this this weekend? Several times. Oh, a few times. Are you tired? <laughs> uh, I'm drinking a Red Bull now, and I'll be good to go in two minutes. Congratulations on being the star of the show. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate we it. it. We'll be back with these guys as soon as we're allowed to drive this. <laughs> Well, there you go. A very speedy, brief look at the latest iteration of Aptera's remarkable electric vehicle, the new Gamma prototype. That thing is really starting to take shape. The interior, complete night and day difference versus the Alpha that I drove and the hardware, the under bits, which we can't see, and admittedly I haven't used yet, are pretty close to production ready at this stage. So do us a favor. Drop a comment saying, yes, please, if you'd like to see Ricky driving the Gamma prototype in an upcoming video on the main channel. I did ask if I could drive it on Friday, and they were like, no, you can't drive our one-of-a-kind prototype before it makes its global debut at your show. It's fair enough, truth be told. But I'm really looking forward to featuring that thing on the channel again very, very soon. And now time for an old-school TV walk off camera. <laughs>